and we won, baby. Let's go. All because of that CPU. Hey everyone, Digital David here today on this episode of Newegg Now. I'm gonna be benchmarking my brand new Cooler Master work from home PC build. I did receive all the Cooler Master products for free to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in any of the products you see here, the links to them will be in the video description. Check out our beautiful small form factor build powered by the AMD Ryzen 5600G, which is why you may notice there's no GPU here. But the good news with that is you're able to buy that CPU and you don't have to worry about scalpers or anything else. You can actually buy your parts and get your PC up and running as soon as they arrive. So really pleased with how this build turned out. Now let's go over the parts list. So you can see our build list right here of all the parts and components that we used. Our grand total was right around $1,100. This can increase or decrease depending on any upgrades or downgrades you may wanna make. So we used 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G with the integrated graphics. That's why I picked this CPU so we didn't have to purchase a GPU and worry about any of that drama. Next, we have the ASUS ROG Strix B550i motherboard. That does have built-in Wi-Fi in case you're wondering. Then for our main storage drive, we have the Lexar M.2 one terabyte. Now this is PCIe 3.0, so keep that in mind. Our motherboard does support PCIe 4.0 drives if you wanna get a different drive. I opted for more storage for this price than faster speeds. Next, we have probably my favorite thing about this build, the Cooler Master Masterbox NR200P in Sunset Orange. Beautiful case. Then you can see our Cooler Master V650 SFX Gold Fully Modular 650 Watt 80 Plus Gold Efficiency Power Supply with a 10 year warranty. Cooling everything off is the Cooler Master A71C CPU Air Cooler for AMD. In the end, we did not use our addressable splitter cable. And then we did swap out the two case fans with the two Cooler Master Master Fans SF120M because I really like the RGB on those fans. So that's a quick look here at our build list and all the specs that went into this build. So the first test I conducted was a benchmarking test on our M.2 drive. So you can see we use Crystal Disk Mark and ASSSD and you can see the results that we get. So for this Lexar drive, it's a one terabyte PCIe 3.0 drive with read speeds up to 3,300 megabytes per second and advertised write speeds up to 3,000 megabytes per second. So you can see we finish right within that ballpark right here. In fact, we actually exceed the read speeds. We got 3,352 and we got really close to getting the advertised write speed. We got 2,957, just a little bit under the 3,000 megabytes per second. In regards to ASSSD, you can see the results right here. We got 2,938 for our read speeds and we got 2738 for our write speeds. Now we're looking at our CPU benchmark results right here for our single core thread, we got a score of 573. For our multi-thread, we got a score of 4695. I'll also head over to the CPU tab so you can see more specs on the Ryzen 5 5600G right here. Feel free to pause the screen if there's anything you wanna look over in more detail. Now you can see our Geekbench 5 results right here. We got a single core score of 1500 and a multi-core score of 7977. You can see our system information right here, our CPU info, our memory info. Now we have a nice breakdown of our single core performance. Again, feel free to pause the screen if you wanna look at any of these scores in more detail. So you can see a nice breakdown right here. Again, single core score of 1500. And then further down, you can see we have our multi-core performance. Again, we got a score of 7977. And you can see a complete breakdown of that score right here in more detail. Now you can see our Cinebench R23 results right here. We got a multi-core score of 10,040 and a single core score of 1416. Here's a breakdown of our single core ranking. We finished number two, so very close to the top. And then you can see our breakdown and ranking for our multi-core score right here. We finished a little bit lower at number four, but still towards the front of the pack. Now we got Armory Crate pulled up and I wanted to talk about the CPU temps and the thermals with this build. So you may have noticed I only have two fans that are exhaust coming out of this build and then one fan on the CPU air cooler. But typically this runs at idle around 31, 32 degrees Celsius. And then when I've had it under full load, CPU at 100% for 10 minutes, 
doing some benchmarking, it went up to 81, 82 degrees Celsius, and then it held steady. So overall, thermals are fine. If we wanted to try to decrease that, obviously we could swap out the tempered glass panel and just put on the great cover that we have with it, but we could add a couple more fans down below to actually bring in some cooler air. But I'm very happy and pleased with the thermal so far. So this isn't a benchmark, but I did want to show you guys the BIOS of this build in case you had any questions or wanted to know what sort of features we can modify and change. So here's the main screen of our BIOS utility right here. Check it out. You can see a lot of system information and I'll show you guys where I changed our memory frequency. So this is 3200 megahertz RAM and I did have to change it in our BIOS settings to get the optimal performance for what we paid for. So here's the main tab. Then we have our AI tweaker right here. This is where I went down and I changed the frequency of our RAM to what it was advertised to work at and it's worked flawlessly. So keep that in mind. Then if you really want to geek out, there's other options you can change and tweak if you're big into overclocking, that sort of thing. You can do that with this board. So you have a lot of options to adjust voltage, that sort of thing. So you can see that right there at the AI tweaker tab. Then we have our advanced tab. Again, we have a lot of config settings right here. A lot of customization with this build. You can see some AMD overclocking. And you can see we have our monitor. You can check that out. If you want to look at some of the temps, fan speeds, pump speed if you have that connected, and then some of the voltage settings again, so you can see all that. Then we have our boot tab, going over the boot config, secure boot options, priority two for your drives. And then you can see we have some ASUS tools as well. So a lot of options right here. And then next up, we have our exit. Don't forget at the top, you can do F3, F6, F9, F4. If you want to control other aspects of your PC as well, right from the BIOS utility. So now we're going to try out the CPU with Fortnite. So you can see the settings we're going to use 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS, and our quality preset is going to be medium. So here we go. You can see what the game looks like. Check it out. I'm going to move it back and forth so you guys can pay attention to the quality that we get here and how everything looks. We have our FPS counter on the screen as well, where we can track our CPU and GPU usage as well as our RAM. So here we go. You can see how everything looks right here. Honestly, for 1080p so far, it's better than I anticipated. It's definitely going to be bearable to play with this system and this CPU. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I thought it'd be a lot worse than it is. I'm not saying it's fantastic or anything, but so far so good. Doing a pretty good job. I mean, you can see a lot of the artifacts in the game are still loading and populating. But so far, so good. Come on. Got him. Got him. Got him. Let's go. Got him. Come on, got him! Got him!
Got him. All right, we'll take it. Hey, we won, baby. Let's go. All because of that CPU. So overall, I'm pleased with how this build came together and the performance that we get. The price to performance ratio is there, especially thanks to our 5600G CPU. It's a great choice for a work from home PC. And if you still wanna do some casual gaming and you're on a tight budget, you definitely want to check this out. As you can see, 1080p gaming is passable. I would rate it as a passable option. 720p is gonna be a lot better, especially if you wanna push higher FPS values but overall very pleased with the benchmarking results that we got with this build everything came together really nicely and it's doing a great job well that concludes our video thank you so much for watching don't forget the product link will be in our video description below please go ahead check it out and do your shopping from there any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you so we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support while you're at it can you go ahead and hit that like button for us and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.